One of the um, more interesting uh, studies recently was a, just a, 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 stu a scholar who uh, was a, also a cave diver, he was a cave <laughs> um, explorer for caves using scuba equipment. And then he uh, pursued a degree in geology, and he was able to uh, look under under the surface, inside the uh, Africa rocks, the uh, limestones, the caves, passages, and figure out different levels of um, erosion of those passages and uh, connect them to the Cody Scar, basically, and do a better uh, definition of where the Cody Scar um, continues down throughout all of um, South Florida. This is the diagram that he did. Uh, the, the, the way that he drew the start, uh, the rocks south of it aren't necessarily the Eocene floor and aquifer. There are other limestones in many cases, uh, rather than the actual um, the actual um, floor and aquifer at the surface. But in any case, there are areas where there's a connection to the aquifer um, that has a lot of parts. So if you look at the, the map, the state map of the uh, where the Florida aquifer is found at the surface, you see it's, um, like I said, a little, basically the Suwannee River um, is the only place where, the Suwannee River Valley is basically the only place where that uh, Florida aquifer crops out the surface in South Georgia, except for in the Darty um, Plain up there um, in Southwest Georgia. But the area right here is where the, is where the Suwannee River has, um, out of coming out of the Okanagan Swamp, has fairly low pH. It's very um, acid, and it uh, dissolves a little more of the rock, so you've got exposure of the aquifer there. Um, we we're going to talk eventually about, about the dynamics of what an aquifer is now, because I know this is a basic um, group of students, and I don't want to use words that we have a perfect for it. Basically, where a water is in the underground area, and we can have that uh, connected right to the surface, which is called an unconfined aquifer, where the uh, groundwater um, comes down, or where water from the surface recharges the aquifer, goes down right into the aquifer, and the aquifer uh, can um, release the water by evaporation to the surface when um, the water table rises. So that's typical of upland areas where um, the rock is fairly porous and can hold water. But um, in many cases, and basically in this area, we have layers, we call confining layers, that um, are, are going underneath the surface and are sitting on top of the water-bearing layers. So they're keeping the water in the groundwater uh, aquifer under pressure, uh, keeping it from reaching the surface. And um, the recharge area is where, where it is in contact with the surface, the water can get into it, but then as it goes down, dip into the rest of the aquifer, it's uh, confined. Those are what are called confining layers. This could be held in a sand or any kind of material. Uh, it doesn't have to be um, um, limestone. <laughs> Usually these uh, aquifers that are confined, they're, they're sands or uh, things that are more porous uh, than limestone. Aquifers that are in limestone, we, uh, we think of as, as karstic aquifers, or karst aquifers, and that's what the upper Florida aquifer is, because uh, the, through that rock you've had all these tunnels created as um, most of this is related to changes in sea level over millions of years that these caves have formed in uh, through um, water that's more acid dissolving the limestone and, um, and also pressure building up in those passages. You can get these huge uh, high pressure hose type, uh, type uh, energies that are scouring out the water. Usually, like I said, and on average, through the uh, upper floor and aquifer, the water is moving fairly slowly. But <clears throat> at a specific um, location, usually in a sandy aquifer, it moves really slow, something like uh, less than a foot a day. 
if you have one of these uh, these tunnels, conduits, they're called in uh, parts of Africa where you have a big, uh, basically an underground river or underground tunnel that's uh, got a slope to it and has pressure on it. The water can move a lot faster than in any other type of situation underground. You can move up to 25 feet a day. So uh, that's still not as fast as a river by any means. They move uh, hundreds of second, but they can um, definitely move a, a lot faster than other types of groundwater. And that means that the water that's coming out of the surface here can go down into the drinking water really fast. Uh, drinking water contaminated by uh, some kind of a gas station tank or something like that um, can convey that really quickly all the way to Florida. Well, within a year or two. So it can move a lot faster in these kinds of aquifers that have these caves in them than it would in um, many other types of groundwater. It is some of the purest groundwater in the world and some of the largest bodies of groundwater in the world, but because of it being in these harsh passages, it also um, has a lot, of, um, a lot of issues with it uh, migrating. 